All right, ladies and gentlemen. Airsoft Fatty is one of the most interesting lol cow type people on YouTube. He's a 26-year-old obese man from Michigan who has had quite a career with a lot of people fascinated in what he's been up to. But you all probably know him mostly from his appearance on the iDubs channel. Ian flew out to Michigan in April of 2019 to shoot a video with Chris in which he explored his life, his friends, his motivations, and really did a deep dive on the subject of Airsoft Fatty. At the time, there were a lot of YouTube documentarians like Shane Dawson really popping off, and so Ian wanted to weigh in with someone a bit more unique that Shane probably wouldn't cover. It was a great video, and probably what many would call one of the last great iDubs videos. If you were to go back to doing these, that would be fire, okay? Back in April, I flew out to Battle Creek, Michigan to meet a fellow YouTuber that goes by the name of Airsoft Fatty. I'm sure you guys have seen some of his videos. His most popular ones are Fortnite Chug Jug Challenge and When Lightsaber Dueling Goes Horribly Wrong. Watch till the end. Oh, I think I just myself. Ian, if you're watching this, do that again. And this video is awesome to see. I was I was never a huge fan of Chris, but I've been aware of him since high school and I would watch his lightsaber videos with my buddies and laugh at them. I also remember like his Chug Jug video, I think was a big deal. He was a bona fide meme back then. And since I was in high school, he's only risen in popularity thanks to the iDubs video, as well as his collaborations with some other channels. At the first Creator Clash, for example, he sang the national anthem and that was just a, <laughs> a beautiful moment. Really brought a tear to my eye. Let's go. Then there was, of course, his collaboration with Jeff Wittick, where he competed with a few other contestants to lose weight. It seemed like a few years ago, Airsoft Fatty was really getting a lot of great opportunities to grow his channel and become a bigger name, despite the relatively low production quality and, you know, value that his own channel had. I think a lot of people were giving him opportunities because he was just an interesting, captivating guy, and he's a very memorable character. I mean, considering most of his content is just him, unedited, hanging out, doing, like, random crap with no real sense of consistency or direction, that's a pretty good deal, right? You get to be in a bunch of other people's channels, you get promoted by people like Jeff. Jeff Wittick and iDubs, who are both really famous, and then you get a bunch of attention on your own channel. Trust me, I know it looks weird, but... What the heck is that? It's got kale, spinach, protein, chia seeds. Ooh. It's got a lot of good stuff. I hate to say it now that you got it, but I hate lettuce and stuff like that. Okay, but we're trying new things here. Just bear what? with me. These things are going to make you feel good. They don't taste good initially right off the bat, but mm. at the end of the day, mm. you're going to feel better. Cheers. <sighs> Be optimistic. Ooh. How is it? <clears throat> no, it's not that bad. That is bad. It's not that bad. It really is. <laughs> the lettuce makes me puke. Oh, oh damn. Sorry guys, they got their laptops out over there. But back in 2019, his mother passed away, and that seemed to hit Chris pretty hard. He actually uploaded a song tribute to her passing, which is a cover of a Green Day song. It makes you feel bad for the dude, you know? Undoubtedly a very sad moment. Especially sad that there are some people in the comment section who are, like, making fun of him. You know, can't help but feel bad for the guy, right? One of my favorite parts of Full Force is when iDubs asks his mother what she likes so much about Fatty. She simply replies, he's mine. What do you love about Chris? No, he's mine. Yeah. I don't know, I just, he's a sweetheart, he really is. He's got his moments, I'm not gonna say he's perfect because he is not far from it. Another moment many remember him from recently was his appearance on Fish Tank. He went into the internet reality show's house a little bit into its run and easily produced some of the funniest moments that the entire thing had to offer. Anytime he was on screen, my eyes were glued, undoubtedly, okay? I was hype. At one point, I actually met Fatty because I actually went on Fish Tank for, for a, a brief period of time. Sorry, it was nice to meet you, Fatty. Hell yeah, man. Take care, buddy. Good night. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Are you getting on a motorcycle, fat ass? Ah, <laughs> uh, I've ridden plenty of them, so I'm pretty sure I know how. Actually, sorry, that wasn't me. That was the mysterious white shark who sounds like me. We lose our scripts and p***s in this bitch. We lose our scripts and p***s in this bitch. Trap 
Papaholics. We make it look easy. Um, but anyway, I was in his presence for a moment there, and uh, I will say, the reports that he smelled quite bad, I can confirm their veracity, okay? I can confirm that those accusations are true. I don't smell yet. But unfortunately, I can't show very much of Airsoft Fatty's own footage from his channel because apparently he, or someone who represents him, is now filing false takedowns on content that uses his material. One of the people covering him extensively has been a channel called Kiwi Tapes, who uploads a lot of lolcow type content. He's been digging into Chris extensively for quite some time, and it seems like Chris and his team finally decided to pull the plug and just start taking things down. Starting with a few live streams this guy had up on his second channel. And this is so offensive, of course, because copyright law, and more specifically fair use, is the one thing that holds the entire internet together like glue. Fair use is the provision in copyright that allows all of your favorite content creators like myself to exist. Disrespecting that and going against the doctrine by filing false takedowns is considered an original sin online, both amongst YouTubers and viewers, as it should be. So therefore, a lot of people from Kiwi Tapes' audience are speaking negatively of Chris, or, you know, more negatively than they already were. I want to talk about Chris for a minute. Though I do not believe Chris is responsible personally for these two videos being struck down, he does have a history of copyright striking people in the past even before he had any kind of manager. Back in the days of the Fortnite Chug Jug challenge going viral, many people also copied it trying to capture some of the viral success that Fatty had attained. A channel called Furious Pete would make his own Chug Jug video, only to have it copyright struck down by Chris. Like I said before, I believe the strike on my backup channel is his manager's handiwork, but Chris does also have a history of doing it himself. Being as I am now blocked from commenting on Airsoft Fatty's channel, and he is blocking anyone who is voicing their opinion on this situation, I truly believe it's his manager who has been known to micromanage all his social media accounts. If Chris or his manager would have contacted me and been civil about the whole thing, I would have edited out the parts that they didn't want up. Instead, without even contacting me, they got five hours of my content taken down. And I have been considered to be one of the most fair people towards Chris in the commentary community. I've gotten a lot of crap for defending him on multiple points in the past. Seems like all those people were right and I was wrong. And it sucks to see because despite everything about Airsoft Fatty, to me, he doesn't seem like an evil person. You can call him embarrassing or cringe, but he definitely is not like a horror cow or anything in that territory. I mean, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I haven't seen everything from this guy. So maybe there's something I'm not, I'm not privy to, but as far as I've seen, he's just like, you know, fat. Just an eccentric dude in a tough situation who needs a break. And it seemed like he was getting his break recently. So the most recent update with Fatty after Fish Tank, which had people thinking his situation was turning for the better, was that he managed to secure a place to stay. He had a tiny home built for him somewhere near, near Bangor, Maine, I believe, which by the way is in like the middle of nowhere, and he seemed to have everything he needed to survive and just exist and make content for a while. Now, full disclosure, these next bits of info are from Kiwi Tapes' video titled Airsoft Fatty is Losing It. One disturbing revelation was this stream Chris made titled Safety Stream, where he seems to be in fear of his personal safety. I mean, in this video, he's borderline having a mental breakdown, he seems to fear for his life, and he says he's turning on the stream to make sure nothing happens to him, as if he's, like, recording for the purpose of avoiding someone hurting him because, you know, they would be on video then and he'd be recording it. It's pretty dark. Around the same time, he claims that his YouTube account was stolen by someone he knows, which doesn't really make sense to me. Like, why Why would anyone other than you need access to your account? This is especially concerning given Chris's history of sketchy managers, like one manager who apparently forced him to stream against his will. This manager named Josh also had access to all of his social media to help manage his stuff, which allowed him to control Chris any way he wanted thanks to that leverage. This man himself was not really an experienced YouTube manager. Apparently, he was a guy who sold Airsoft Fatty, that green, stinky Schweed, okay? Why Chris felt the need to, like, get this guy to help him with YouTube considering his lack of experience is, is, is beyond me. But he had this manager who was basically just a leech for a while, taking cuss from him and apparently not doing much in return. But Chris eventually got rid of this guy after a long while of his audience calling him a scumbag. But then with Josh gone, his friends got involved and just continued acting out this guy's will. And a former member of the IRL filming crew for Airsoft Fatty then went on to corroborate on video that Chris's life was not in his own hands. And apparently he needed some kind of help, right? Because these people were just taking advantage of him basically. And he wasn't, he wasn't mentally in a place to be able to push them away. I tried texting Chris on multiple occasions, as you can see on the screen here, there's multiple texts that I sent to him, and one time I got an answer from him, and it was the day that the kidnapping video actually was released. 
and it said, I can't tell you much, but what I can say is that Josh won't give me my computers. So that means that Josh was in full control of everything. And that was a very scary text to hear. I told Chris to call me. He said he'd call me later. I told him the next day, could you call me? And he said, I'll call you a little bit later. Never called me, never contacted me again. I had texted him three more times as I'm showing on the screen. No answer whatsoever. So he just, Josh completely cut me off from him. Josh and his crew completely cut me off when they said they didn't care if I was talking to Chris. whoop de doo whoop de doo I'm Josh and I'm a liar. Yeah. Overall, what he's done to me is terrible, but what he's done to Chris is far worse. I'm just giving this information to you so you understand how bad of a person Josh actually is. It seemed like the guy was really being taken advantage of by some bad actors. There was even this call leaked from the manager at one point where they like scream at each other. You ruined my whole lunch. You ruined my whole day. You ruined my whole lunch. Oh, I ruined your whole lunch. But after a long saga here, finally Josh was gone for good. But at this point, it becomes more apparent that maybe a manager was actually needed because on his own, he could not post good content consistently. Instead, he posted unedited videos of him talking to the camera on a non-regular basis. So while it could be the case that Josh was taking advantage of him, maybe Fatty does need some kind of caretaker to deal with his bullshit. Fast forward through a ton of cancer, and while Chris is down on his luck, he gets invited to be on Fish Tank. It's a big moment for him. He gets to be on a popular platform run by popular people, he gets thousands of eyes on him, and it's a decent chance to promote his own brand, something he does pretty well on the show by just being himself. Despite his negative character traits and the fact that his fat self was basically naked on camera for a lot of it. But there were still some classic moments from that show that directly involved Fatty that never could have existed without him. Like if you if you look up Airsoft Fatty on Fish Tank compilation on YouTube, you'll probably find a ton of funny videos and uh it's a it, it's a good stuff like there's there's no denying it And now where are we? Well, Chris moved into a tiny home on land owned by people who apparently grow plant, for lack of a better term, for a living. And these people are apparently not doing this legally. Now, I'm not one to throw a fit over people engaging in a little green, okay? Would never encourage that as per YouTube TOS, but hey, people have been enjoying that substance against the law for 60 years. Some of them do it safely. I don't really care. That, that being said, it makes you lazy, so stop doing it. But what is important is that this is not necessarily the most stable living situation when the people whose land you live on are potentially engaging in illicit sales of substances. That's not, that's probably not a good sign, right? Fatty also has a GoFundMe where anyone who wants to donate can, and as of now, he's raised nearly $30,000, which is how we got the tiny home in the first place. The purpose of this GoFundMe is to set Chris up with a home he can buy so we can be independent and start over fresh. Every single penny of the GoFundMe collected will go towards a permanent shelter for Chris, not towards fast food or anything of waste. This is for finding Chris a house. Chris, also known as Airsoft Fatty, has made millions of people laugh around the world. He's now asking for help in his time of need so we can get back to making content and making people laugh. Chris has made some poor financial and life decisions in the past that have led him into a bad position. Currently, trying to pick himself up from the pieces and start fresh. He was recently evicted and is currently homeless with no permanent place to go. We're looking for help from friends, fans around the world, and also his past collaborators to get back on his feet. He plans to buy a trailer in a safe park with low lot fees that he can manage monthly. Any extra will go towards getting him a vehicle. He has a license, but no working car. Update. After looking at many campers, trailers, and even some RVs, we decided that was not going to work. It was hard for him to move around in some bathrooms he couldn't even fit inside. He ended up buying a lofted barn, securing a lot, and building out his dream home out of a tiny home. It has everything he needs to survive, live comfortably. It has been a long process, but it is almost complete. We're about 85 to 90% complete. Follow his YouTube channel for updates along the way. He's dubbed his home the Fatty Shack. Join me along on the ride. Tune in on YouTube for a step-by-step -step renovation. So it does look like that tiny home has been completed now he's moved in. And on one hand, I want to like Chris and root for his success. You know, he clearly is someone who didn't grow up with the best background financially, right? He didn't grow up in a super nice area or anything. 
anything like that. You know, he did make some poor financial decisions, but you know, you want to root for his success. You don't want to cheer on his downfall. On the other hand, him copyright claiming people is absolutely horrible, and I'm never going to support that behavior. Big no-no, okay? Imagine me wagging my finger right now. Now the comment section is going to be like, Tom the type of guy to wag his finger and say, hey, no, you people are insufferable, okay? I genuinely wish the worst for you. Not kidding. You know, going into this video, I didn't expect there to be this much lore on Chris. I knew he had a history and I knew factoids about him, but I did not know all of this regarding his manager. It's sad to learn he's been taken advantage of, but at the same time, at some point, you have to be held responsible for your own actions. Copyright takedowns are his own actions. Now, I'm going to end this off with one little piece of information for all of you to chew on and think about, okay? To get your noggin jogging just a little bit, activate your almonds, to, uh, to get things going on upstairs, because I want you guys to really think long and hard about Airsoft Fatty. Rewind the clock all the way back to the iDubs video. Multi-million subscriber channel does a video with Fatty and gives him basically free advertisement to that audience. He gets a big subscriber increase from iDubs' video, the fans love his stuff, and he now has a much larger platform. This is an opportunity. This is undoubtedly a big opportunity. Then as time passes, apparently Fatty felt iDubs just kind of left him in the dust, which is when this video comes out. It's titled Airsoft Fatty Loses It and Calls Out iDubs, and I, dressed as Mario at the time apparently, because that was the look I was going for, decided to react to it, because he's been on fish tank, so we'll see what he says about iDubs here. Guy. I am an influencer. Baby, give me some time, please. I know you can tell I'm stressed. I know you want me to pay you a calm down, but this needs to be said. This needs to be said. Because I'm tired of people making me feel like shit when I reach out for help. I'm tired of people making me feel like shit. I'm tired of it. This is a very sad clip. I feel bad for this dude. I reached out to Ian for help that day, and Ian never replied. You want to talk about some shit? I messaged my items the other day. I said, hey, could you just share my stream around? I didn't ask him for money or anything. I said, hey, share my stream around. Look at the oh, message. Okay. Never I don't think he's line. demonetized. I think he's just not pulling views and he's he's asking Ian to share the stream, I guess. Man, that doesn't fucking make me feel like shit, man. Sick and tired of this shit. Anyone, please, you gotta give me some time, okay? This needs to be said. I know you can tell I'm fucking beyond. Poor fuck. Poor dude. I'm tired of people telling me it's gonna be okay, but it isn't. It is it? Because nothing's gonna change. As much as I want it to, as much as I put the work in to get it to change, someone's gonna be there to steal that shit or gonna take it from me. I love you, buddy. I love you so much, buddy. I'm tired of f***ing breaking like this. So I guess as a content creator, he's kind of fallen on hard times, and I guess Ian wasn't retweeting his stuff, so he feels that, you know, he needs some help, and he was trying to get someone bigger to promote his stuff, and it wasn't really working out for him. Um, I don't know if... Ian necessarily owes him a retweet or something or tweeting out a stream, but regardless, I do feel I do feel bad for the dude in this situation. So this was then followed up by, and I, I could be schizophrenic, but I think I remember this. Fatty kind of dissed Idubs when he was on Fish Tank. He was like in the kitchen, I think, and he said something about him. And arguably, he was, you know, de facto dissing Idubs in the first place by being on that show at all, all things considered, you know, with who was running it and, and Ian's opinion on that person, you know? I imagine Ian didn't want to talk to Chris after this. After I dropped the Mario cosplay to return to my eighth grade roots, what also happened is that I did that while interviewing Harley from Epic Mealtime. I talked to him about the IDubs drama, and he said one thing that really caught my attention. Listen closely. He he doesn't do crazy. Uh, he says crazy. See, but I feel like him bringing like airsoft fatty on fish tank is a way to f with IDubs without like 100%. actually. And I can't believe airsoft fatty went on there and dissed IDubs. He's being like, insane, man. He got naked. He's in blackface. It's fucking crazy. Yeah, it is crazy. But I'm so shocked that he dissed iDubs. Like, like iDubs like sent eight hundred dollars to Fatty to like pay for his rent, like privately. He and I just know this. He just, he sent him eight hundred dollars to pay for his rent. If this is true, then that means that Fatty is a very ungrateful person. This is like third hand information. I assume by the time I got it, so who even knows what happened? But Harley knows iDubs. He fought in both creator clashes. I assume he didn't make this up on the fly. If he did, then well, I've been bamboozled. But if iDubs paid his rent like one day before he went to the fish tank, I mean that's a bit of a mind boggle, right? Hopefully, ASF Chris stops copyright claiming people and goes back to making funny content in his tiny home. I think that a lot of people are rooting for a success, and I think even someone like Kiwi Tapes, who has just received these false takedowns, he's probably not rooting for Chris's failure. He probably doesn't want him to not succeed. I think he just wants to be able to make his videos and, and talk about Airsoft Fatty, right? But if you look at the uh, comment section, we have a pretty interesting comment section on this Kiwi Tapes video. One of them says, he is one creepy message to a minor away from becoming a horror cow. Rip my boy Chris. Letty really dodged a bullet. 
Now, in fairness, I don't think there's any indication that Chris is going to do anything like, you know, like like that. But when they say Letty really dodged a bullet, I think they're referencing uh, Letty from Fish Tank. Actually, I know they're referencing Letty from Fish Tank, who Chris was very into, and I think she she denied his advances. Another comment says, if Fatty's manager's charges are 95% domestic violence, you may need a purse to box him. And a wig. Maybe a dress, too, so it feels familiar to him. Another person said, someone just snitch on their illegal weed farm already. And Kiwi Tapes, he replies saying, nah, guys, that's not the way. People consider me pointing this out as snitching. I just don't want people to keep paying to that fund if they're using it for that kind of stuff. I don't think these people should necessarily be snitched on or anything. This guy named Based Bucket says it's truly sad seeing Fatty get so close to changing for the better and then just abusing small content creators. And yeah, I mean, I mean, really, like, if you look at the comment section, there's people talking about, you know, Chris misses redemption arcs and now he's going to do the villain arc. It's kind of sad to see that, you know, a lot of people seriously want this guy to not be in this situation. They want him to be helped. They don't want him to be, you know, antagonistic with the YouTube community because much like someone like, you know, I would compare him to like King Cobra JFS. He's a relatively harmless lol cow until stuff like this happens. Hopefully he does not do this again. In the meantime, if you guys could please contact iDubs and let him know his old buddy Stevie from college needs some help paying rent, I would very much appreciate that. Come on, Ian, I know you got the money for it. Can uh, Consider this charity, okay? Just wire that 250k that you guys lost, just wire it to me. Let's be honest, I need it way more. Thanks for watching. Bye. And if you liked this video, consider becoming a member. For $5 a month, you get access to exclusive podcasts, unreleased videos, and the members-only Minecraft server. Thanks so much to all of my YouTube members who fund my content.